What's up, Big Blue Nation? How you doing? I'm your boy, Bradley B-Roll Production, McKee in the building. And I've been doing each week, you know, former players, former Wildcat players, I should say, um, just catching up with them through my little Zoom meeting. And this week, I'm happy to be joined by somebody I love, the fans love at Big Blue Nation, Johnny David. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. How about you? Uh, I'm doing good, though, man. Doing good. I'm just glad to have you on. Uh, like you said, uh, it's been kind of crazy going this last month with uh, the coronavirus. Everybody's been kind of cooped up. So I guess this uh, start off by saying, what have you been up to, man? Uh, what have you been doing to kind of pass time during this crazy, uh, I guess, crazy time? Yeah, well, I'm still in uh, grad school right now, PT school. So that was a big change because we had to do all the online classes. So for the majority of it, I've been just cooped up in my house studying. So not much change there, but these next few weeks, I finally got off a little break and I'm now at my parents' place just chilling. And I, it's, I've been working out. That's about it. Like there's not much else you really can do. <laughs> yeah. What's, what's, what's your workout? You talking about been working out? What are you been to push up, sit ups? You got a weight room? What have you been doing? Yeah, we got a little weight room here. So yeah, we got a little like bench. We can get some squats in, got a, like a trap bar. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's the main reason why I really wanted to come home to be honest because <laughs> I was down, I'm place down at school I just been running like crazy because there's, there's like some nice trails down there on the river right down in Pittsburgh so that's what I was doing but it's nice getting that little lift in here now yeah you know I, I, a lot of people probably don't know where you were from but yeah you were from Pittsburgh um y your dad played at Pittsburgh and there was a yep. familiar face on the coaching staff I think coach Cal was there uh this, yep. this yep. talk this talk about that Did your dad kind of talk about coach Cal and his playing days um, yeah, no, he, he brought him up. He is, he is an interesting story for sure with, with Cal. Um, I don't know. If, I mean, he's, he, I can get him to tell it if you want him to tell it. <laughs> I, I don't Talk care. About, about Cal. I, I guess I don't care. You know, this is, this is our, this is our zoom in. We can, we can direct yeah. it if we want to. <laughs> yeah, you hear me? <laughs> we talking about your days with Cal. Yeah. You wanna? Are you able to share your your story? I got a Kentucky shirt on. Is it qualifying? Yeah, he got a Kentucky shirt on, so he's, he's oh, good. Oh, good. He good. I like it. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> good. How you doing? Good. So I was just talking to Johnny about Coach Cal, and, and obviously you played for him. Maybe he's, I think it was his first year. You were as a him as an assistant, right? And you were playing there. Just right. do you have any uh, funny stories or any memorable moments about Coach Cal when you were playing for him? Yeah, well, I got a couple. I mean, I, I mean, Coach was like five years older than me, so we were kind of hanging out. But I, I remember so a couple. Trouble, right? I'm not getting in trouble. All right, I'm sure. uh, I remember a couple of things. One, I always remember how much he idolized Larry Brown. I mean, we'd be watching TV or watching the game, and Larry Brown have a certain type of shoe on. He'd be like, "Look at those shoes Larry got on. Look at those shoes." You know, and Cal would get those shoes, and we we went probably spent 45 minutes trying to find the. Uh, pizza place so Larry Brown liked that but near Harvard we played Boston College but Cal was always a guru I mean he's just a, a nut but I think the last game I'll tell you this story the last game I played at Pitt we had lost it was in NIT and uh you know I was 22 so I went down to the bar and I didn't we didn't care anymore and we had some drinks and uh with my other teammates and then they left and then whatever and the, the 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 tab came over to me and I like I signed John Calipari room 239 you know <laughs> and uh so the next day you know we get on the, the plane and we're on the plane and he comes walking by and all he did was stop and look at me and I looked at him and I said what's up he goes you have a good time last night and I said yep and he just kept on walking so he kind of <laughs> knew that I, he knew I signed his name it's kind of his way of saying hey you're, you're done you're a senior be on your way but uh, uh <laughs> always a good-hearted guy you know always good-hearted guy so i always tell him back in the day like when what are you waiting for why aren't you looking for a head job why don't you get a head job you're and he he, he was a, one of the first guys that he was a five-star guy like i was he was one of the first guys that started like individual instruction and trying to get guys individually better and just not roll the balls out and uh, he got a lot of that from the five-star game so that's about all i can share with you <laughs> uh, that's about all. yeah i oh, love yeah, it thank yeah, you for yeah. coming thank you for doing that no problem. Special, special guest special guest story right there special guest hey I, I feel like your dad probably has tons of stories i'm sure you heard them all and uh that that's the good thing about 
you know, when you play a sport, you have such good stories. And I guess moving on for you, you played there at Kentucky for four years. You were there. Uh, do you yeah. have any memorable moments or some stories you can tell that are, I guess, PG, I guess, I want to say? Cause, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, see, it's hard. There's just so many that, like, that happen. And I don't really – it's like whenever I talk to when I talk to some people, like I've been catching up, kind of like how you've been doing. I've been catching up with some people, we'll kind of reminisce a little bit. And there's some things you just forget about until you start talking, and then you just bring it back up. And it's like, wow, that was an incredible time. I just forgot about that. But honestly, some of my best memories were just just with the guys. Just like our, especially like my my freshman and sophomore year. I was probably the closest teams that I was with, and I remember just the little things that like we would stay up to like, <laughs> yeah, we would stay up to like 4 a.m. a night. Um, I forget, it was during the NCAA tournament. It was, um, probably shouldn't have stayed up that late, but we, we'd stay up to like 4 a.m. playing just GTA in the room. We, <laughs> I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say it was year, cause I'm not trying to get in trouble, but <laughs> the one time we left, we left the hotel, went across the street, got like steak and shake, it was like 5 a.m. Uh, we had an off day the next day. We just we just won, so we had some time. But just stuff like that. It just it's just so memorable, with, like with those guys. And, uh, and I know that you didn't play a lot, but you know you were part of the team, and we know how you know big Blue Nation fans are. They're crazy about every player, whether you play or not. What was your experience like? I guess in Lexington when you were there, like on campus, going to class or to go get something to eat. Uh, you know, I know the the big stars get stopped every time. But what about yourself? I know you were a fan favorite as well. Yeah. Um, Started like probably my junior, senior year was probably more when people recognized me a lot more just because I've been there four years. Um, my like freshman, sophomore year, like I would always hang out with like EJ, Marcus, Isaac Humphreys, Mike Mulder. And you see those guys walking, they'd be like seven foot. So like they'll see them. That's almost how I was recognized if I was with them. But, but yeah, and no, it's crazy just whether it's like another student I'm in a class with that would just like start talking to me about stuff and, um, and just or walking through the mall, like you would just see people. They would always, it would always be like a double stare at you, you know, mm -hmm. like the kind of look. Cause I mean, I look kind of look like everyone else. Like I'm not that big, tall, tall guy. Like I wasn't like huge jacked or anything like that. So like they would always kind of look and be like, it would always be like that little double glance at me. And I was <laughs> like, but it was kind of nice. Like it was pretty nice. Yeah, you know, that's good to have that recognition. I know, you know, it's definitely new for you, but also, you know, flattering. But my, one of my favorite moments uh, of you when you were at, at uh, Kentucky, man, was the all uh, all access. You know, that that was – I loved that all access. And then, obviously, you, you always make fun of me when I – you said I had a little tiny camera, <laughs> a video camera, you guys coming on and off the floor. Uh, I guess the all access, let's start with that. Um, how did that get started, and what was the whole meaning behind you doing that? It got started, I forget which year it was. I want to say it might have been my sophomore year. We just would be on those media days, and, like, the ones – I mean, you've been there all the time. We'll sit there for 45 minutes. And me, I'm, I get bored really easily, so I would just – so I would grab something. I remember I grabbed, like, one of those uh, – Gatorade gummies and I would just fake start interviewing people without a camera just to mess with all the other media people mm -hmm. and then people started liking that and then it was me TJ your boy TJ yep. and, uh Deb Moore that we went to, we would like those are like my people so we went to lunch um one day and we were kind of thinking about it and then TJ was like all like all for it and Deb was like yeah that's that's all you guys you guys want to do that and so yeah, it would just they just gave me a mic. I wouldn't really know what I was gonna do or say, um, and I think that that was the beauty of it too. That was the beauty of it because it was just like raw material. It was just us in the locker room. Occasionally there'd be something that would happen, and then we would kind of spin off that and kind of see what people would like. And then they started taking the mic and doing uh, started rapping and all that stuff, but. No, it was it was a fun time. I wish I did it all four years. That's like I I have very few regrets in my life, and I feel like if I did that all four years, I feel like that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I, I agree, man. It, it was entertaining. I, you know, you you started going, and I love how Ashton was always snatching the mic from you and <laughs> do his own thing. That was that was that was the best part. You snatching, and I guess you know your whole four years you were playing there. Um, you played with a lot of great players. You know, guys that went to the NBA. You know, had some great success overseas or whatever. They're just great people. Uh, is there a particular player that you, 
I guess, loved to watch or was one of your favorites when you were at UK or even now in the NBA? Do you love to, you know, you like, hey, man, that's one of my all-time favorites playing with? I mean, I love watching all the guys in the NBA. Like, I'm, I don't really – I mean, I'm from Pittsburgh. We don't really have an NBA team. So, if there's a game on – if there's no Kentucky guys on it and it's not like the playoffs or something, I, I don't really care. Like, I just like watching any of them, to be honest. It's just it – just, it's more interesting for me, you know. Um, but at, at Kentucky, people – I got this question a lot. Of, my answer, I don't think, has ever changed since, like, my freshman year. Mm-hmm. Watching Tyler Eulis was – it was insane. Like just the things that he would do, the things, how he would conduct himself, how he'd conduct the floor. Um, it's just, I've, I haven't seen that in another player since and just the way he controlled things. And still to this day, I'll tell people if he was just a little bit taller, he would easily have been a lottery pick, which is, I mean, it's, it's things the way it is. He's still an amazing player, but the way he conducted himself and the team was it was pretty – that was one of the most unique people I've seen go through the program. I remember there was this drill. Um, I would be, like, the offensive person. And I think it was, like, me and, me and EJ Florio, we would always – we would go from, like, end to end because we'd be the people that the – if they were doing defensive drills. So, me and EJ, we'd always have, like, a competition between us as far as who could score the most. And we would just, like, put a little something on it and, like, make it interesting. Um, well, there's a drill we did with the guards. We would kind of come off a screen and then try and just, like, take them one-on-one. And it was just kind of to stay within the cones. And then I'd be matched up with Tyler. And this is my freshman year. I'm still adjusting. This dude, like, I couldn't – if I tried to do a move on him, he'd pick it. Like, so I finally realized, I was like, I, I can't make a move on him. Like, so I was like, I just kind of went. And I was like, normally I'll try and do something, change to the left, or go back to the right. I was like, I'm just going right. That's it. I can't do a move because I know he's going to pick it. And I remember I scored on him one time. And he got, like, he got, like, pissed after. And I was, like, I was, like, hey, man, like, one out, of, one out of, like, it was, like, maybe, like, 15 that day. I was, like, one out of 15, you'll be all right. Like, and I even told Matt, I was, like, I learned. I can't do a move against you. You're, like, he's too quick. He just, he could just read things. And, but yeah, no, he was a special player for sure. He was, he was. I, I, he's amazing to watch, and you know, uh, hope he gets another chance, maybe play back in the NBA if he if he does. But I'm gonna yeah. jump back to your days before you came to Kentucky. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, your dad, you know, played for Coach Cal at Pitt. You know, as he was assistant. What was your thought process? What schools well, you considered to go to before you came to Kentucky? Did you have a a list of some schools you wanted to go to? Yeah, I mean, I definitely I got some interest from. Probably, like, obviously, every, like, deep through school around Pittsburgh, like, every um, – um, pretty much every school. But I would get some interest from Ivy League schools. Um, and then I would – I was – it was to the point where, like, they kept wanting me to, like, go out there. And it was towards – it was probably, like, the summer going into my senior year when all this started really happening. And um, so then going into, like, my senior year, that's whenever I went down to uh, Lexington – for just go for practice and kind of go like kind of just be down there see a practice with um the guys and then we got to talking to Cal and pretty much and he kind of offered me a spot and I because he, I mean, he's from the Pittsburgh area like he got connects um so they kind of like knew I wasn't just like some random player um so then after that kind of happened it kind of I kind of stopped because I knew that was on the table so if coaches would call me and stuff I would just tell them about it so a part of me, like, I always wish I kind of waited to after my senior year, which was obviously, you know, it's my best year, to really see what the list could have been. But at the same time, it doesn't matter. I, I knew where I was going. Like, <laughs> I just, I more I wish I had that just for when people ask me that question. I had like a, oh, yeah, I was able to go here and here. Mm-hmm. But, like, when it comes down to it, it would not have changed a single thing in, like, in my life besides <laughs> being able to answer that question right there. What are you watching on Netflix or Hulu or what are you, Amazon Prime, whatever you're watching? What, what do you have on your playlist? What are you watching, man? What am I watching? I started, I started Westworld. I'm watching that a little bit. The new season came out. I haven't watched the episode of Sunday. It's, it's wild. It's, I got I to gotta Google the recap after. I can't. <laughs> it got to the point where, like, I kind of knew what was going on. And it was one of those shows that just kind of just blew your mind. I was like, all right, I got to rewatch this and do something. But. Other than that, obviously, I've been watching The Last Dance. Um, that's really good. That's Oh, man. I'm excited for next week. I guess they're going to be talking about Kobe and all that. So 
Do you have any Coach Cal stories? You any funny Coach Cal moments you had with him when you were at Kentucky? I just remember the coaches in general, like they would love to hype me up in practice, like just to get under the skin of the other player. Because I remember, I'm, I'm I'm switching to a KP story now, so that's all good. <laughs> just because this is where it's going. But I remember there was a practice. It was my junior year, and we like you know that year we battled like a lot of injuries and stuff. Mm-hmm. So like I was practicing every day on the five on five drills, and of course. I'm I'm matched up with Kevin Knox, which the coaches KP would always tell me he's like he goes I don't care foul him hack him like just like get him tough and I was like and I've I'm in my third year right now I was like I know exactly what you want I got you like he knew I was capable of doing that mm-hmm. but obviously Kevin wouldn't like that so there was times we just you know you know the play the two circle we coming out to the wing and all that so they would just, they would start doing that in this this part of practice. And I would just, like, get my fake energy going, like, let's get it, like, let's go, like, and just, I would just get into him, and I remember I denied him the ball, like, twice, and, like, stole it, something like that, and then KP just started hyping me up like crazy, and started yelling at Kevin, and as soon as this happens, I know I'm catching a bow, I'm something, <laughs> like, like, he's not gonna let this happen again, so I, I'm just, like, I, I forget what I, exactly what I said to Kev, I was, like, I was like, I was like, if you're gonna hit me, just like, just make sure you hit me in the chest, don't hit me in the face. Like, so I know because he's, I can see the frustration build up. So like, it was all from the coaches that would just try and hype me up just to get that response from the player. Which to their credit, they knew what they're doing. It, it, it worked. But I would always be the one that would get at the butt end of it. Like, it was, <laughs> hey, but it felt good though. You, you know, you got gassed up a little bit. Um, you know, oh, you made your teammates okay. better. You know, it worked out well. Yeah. You know, like the best Cal saying, it was it was my senior year, so it was like normally when he started like talking about a story, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I've heard this like at least five times by now. So like, but the newest the newest one was, um, I don't know where he got it, but he's like, see, everything be going great. Like all it takes is like one person, and he used the the analogy of like if you have ice cream. Like, it's good ice cream cone. Like, it's great. It's delicious. Like, you're going to eat it. But, like, if someone if someone put a little piece of poop in the ice cream, you're not going to eat it. And he was probably just telling everyone, like, don't be that piece of poop. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't poop in the ice cream. And I remember, like, I started, like, laughing. I was like, that's a new one. I like that one. I'm going to like that one. I'm going to remember that one for sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> You'll find All right, a way. I'm gonna wrap this up real quick. I'm gonna say, hey, Johnny, man, thank you for for taking some time with me. It's always a pleasure talking with you, man. You're you're you were great there when you're at UK. I had a lot of great laughs. You were fun. I love that you uh, would pick on me while I was there. So I want to say thank you for doing this interview with me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I appreciate you having me. It's a fun time. I, I didn't really think of it much as an interview. It was more just like a catching up, to be honest. That that's true. That's true. You're right. It wasn't an interview. It was just catching up, chat. It was a chat. It was a chat. <laughs>